Another application that's well integrated into the G Suite is Google Calendar. So that means that you can find Google Calendar across any application in the G Suite and you can pull upon all of your calendars as well as create and modify events that you already have. So from our Gmail inbox, what we're going to do is navigate to the right here, which is our pane of applications, again, that are integrated within Gmail. So up at the top, we're just going to click on Calendar, and it's going to pull in a pane from the right that gives us a schedule of what we have upcoming. Now, you can change this view if you'd like to go to a different type of view. As you can see, if you click up here, you can go to a particular day and look at the schedule for that day. Or you could actually click over here and change to a day view. Now, if you do that, you'll see that it just gives you the entire day's worth of time, as well as any of the actual events, be them all day events, or they might actually be certain times events that you might see on your schedule down here. But again, that just shows you the particular day. You could scroll through the days with a left or right arrow here. As you can see, on Thursday, I had a website redesign discussion at 10 a.m. But the day before, I had a task catch-up, and that was just my all-day event. Now, again, up here, you can select any day. So we could even go forward to Saturday, June 1st. As you can see, you got nothing scheduled there. Now, I personally like the schedule view, as it gives me kind of a holistic view of what I have upcoming. Now, I'll scroll back up. And as you can see, you can scroll up and down through all of the actual things that you have scheduled. Now, if I wanted to modify one of these events, what I could do is I could click here on the event itself. This will pull over another pane that shows you the title of that event, gives you the option to edit that in the calendar application, which I'll show you in a moment. It'll give you the time and date for that event. And you can see this is repeated weekly on Mondays. It gives you the location, which is a virtual event. It gives you the guest list here, as you can see who's coming there. And then it gives you a description of that event if one has been set, as well as a reminder, and it tells you which calendar this is located within. Down at the bottom, if this event was something where you were given an invite, you could change whether or not you're going, yes, no, and maybe. And right here, you could choose to add a note to this event if you'd prefer. Now, way up at the top, you have an option here to email guests for this event. Again, this is something that is only used in events where you have been sent an invite or you've sent an invite. Over here, you can choose to delete this event from your calendar. And then going further to the right, you could open this event in a new tab, which actually takes you into the dedicated Google Calendar application. Now, to the far right, you could just close this. So what we're going to do is go back here, and we're going to go down to the far bottom and create our own event. Now, if we do this, you'll see a small new window will appear over here, which gives you the option to set a title for your event, set a date and time here, if you want this event to be an all-day event, add a description with some limiting format or limited formatting options here for you, and then you could choose to actually add guests down here at the bottom if you'd like to make it a meeting. Now, this is a little bit of a rudimentary approach to creating an event. You don't have all the options that you would have available in the dedicated calendar application. But if that's something you'd like to do, you can open Edit in Calendar. Or, as I said before, you can click on Open in New Tab. So I'm just going to click Edit in Calendar. And I'm not going to go too far into this because this is a different application. And we'll do a different course on Google Calendar. But as you can see, now you have some more options for when it comes to actually creating that event. So you can add a time zone here. You could choose a repeat time. You could find a time using the scheduler here to see if anything worked for your guests. You could also add a location, conferencing if you'd prefer, and different types of notification as well as, or different types of notifications rather, and as well as actually changing your visibility. So right here, the default visibility is known as busy, or rather it's shown as busy. So that means that if this event is actually up on someone else's calendar, it'll be blocked off for you, and you won't be able to actually be um, put into another event, for example, in that time frame. Now, over here on the right, you can actually set settings for your guests. So this is a little bit more in-depth, again, than just the small calendar app that's actually integrated into Gmail. So from here, you can choose to have your guests modify the event, invite other guests, and even see the guest list themselves. Now I'm going to back out of this. And now you'll see, again, we're in the dedicated calendar application. So there's a lot more that we can do here. And we'll talk about this in a separate course. But I did want to show you that 
if the options that you have here are not enough for you, you do always have the option to pull open that calendar application, either by clicking open in a new tab or clicking the edit calendar button right here. Now, if you'd like to delete event, or rather an event, as I said before, you could just left click here and click on the remove from this calendar button. Now, if it's a recurring event, it will give you an option to remove just this instance or all the events from your calendar. And as soon as you do either of those, it'll immediately take effect across all of your applications in the G Suite.